everyone in the previous video we just saw what is a linear programming problem in that we saw some of the terminologies those terminologies we will understand in this video with a, with an example right the example is as follows a company manufactures two different types of products p1 and p2 each product requires processing on two different machines one is milling machine another one is drilling machine but each type of machines has limited hours available per week the net profit of the products comma resource requirements of the products and availability of resources are summarized in the table below so that is this is the table uh, milling machine drilling machine how much uh, is required for processing per unit of product 1 and product 2 uh, it means you need for processing product one, you need to pass through milling machine two hours and in drilling machine, you need to pass it for four hours. Similarly, if I have to manufacture product two, I need to pass through milling machine five hours and drilling machine two hours. Uh, but there is a constraint or a restriction. Milling machine you can use in a week 200 hours only. Drilling machine you can use in a week 240 hours only. If I manufacture this product one and product two and sell it, I can earn a profit of rupees 250 in product one. I can earn a profit of rupees 400 in product two per unit. Question is develop a linear programming model based on this whatever data given, which will enable us to determine the optimal production volume of each of the products such that the total profit is maximized subject to the availability of machine hours. So here we are supposed to determine uh, optimal production volume. So I will say here production volume. Since we are supposed to determine, we don't know now what it is, we'll assume that as x and y. y, x units of product one, y units of product two. Now, question is develop a linear programming model. So in the previous video, we saw uh, any linear programming will have an objective function, a set of constraints and non-negativity restrictions. So we have to create those objective function uh, constraints and also the non-negativity restriction. Objective. Here, objective is such that the total profit is maximized. That means I am interested in maximizing the total profit. So let me say our objective is to maximize total profit. We'll consider this total profit as capital Z. That means our objective function will be our objective function is maximize the total profit, which is our Z. And that is equal to what? See, uh, for if you sell one unit of product one, you will earn 250 rupees. If you sell one unit of product two, you will earn 400 rupees, but you are planning to manufacture and sell X units of product one, Y units of product two. That means for product one, the total profit will be 250 times X. Similarly, for product two, the total profit will be 400 times X. So for the organization, the total profit will be 250 times X plus 400 times Y. Okay, this is our objective function. And there are some constraints because there is a machine hour constraint here. So I will say subject to this can be done, but such that, or I can also say subject to, subject to what? Subject to this is what is required a number of hours per unit. And this is the available hours per unit. This two, it means it is two hours per unit but we are planning to manufacture X units of this product. Similarly, five hours per unit, you are manufacturing, you are planning to manufacture Y units. 
That means total hours will be two times x here, five times y here. So I will say two times x, five times y. And this is the maximum hours available in milling machine. What is this? This is actually uh, required hours, required hours in milling machine. That is what we calculated. Okay. Similarly, let us calculate the required hours in drilling machine. So one unit, it is four hours. We are planning to manufacture X units. So it becomes four times X. So four X plus, uh, here it is two times Y. So the required hours in drilling machine. Right. So now we have both uh, what is the required number of hours in milling machine, what is the required number of hours in drilling machine. Now these required hours cannot exceed this 200 because that is the maximum available hours. So our constraints are, so this we made it subject to I would write, this we calculated it. These required hours should not exceed that should be less than or equal to what 200 similarly the second one 4x plus 2y it should not exceed 240 hours so these are called as constraints these two things are called as constraints Now, the third one is non-negativity restrictions. So our both this X and Y, these two are representing quantities and it cannot take any negative values, but it can be zero also. It can anything positive also. That means these two has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is called non-negativity restrictions. Non-negativity restrictions. Right. Now, this we are actually planning to determine the optimal production value, which is nothing but this X and Y. That will decide how much of units you are supposed to produce product one and product two. So we call this X and Y as decision variables. Here, X and Y are decision variables. Further, this is considered as linear programming problem. Why linear? Because everywhere the coefficient of x and y is, sorry, the uh, degree of x and y or the power of x and y is one. So that is why it is considered to be linear. Means it is, I can say x or it is x power one, y or y power one, x or x power one. Everywhere it is power one only. That is why we call it as linear basically, right? Now, uh, we can write these constraints in the form of a matrix also. Means if I have to represent this constraints in the form of a matrix, constraints can be represented in matrix form as, how can I, write it in matrix form and put matrix symbol like this 2 5 4 2 and write 2 5 4 2 this is actually getting multiplied with x and y and then this is less than or equal to uh, first one is 200 second one is 240 i'm sorry Two hundred, and the next one is two forty. So uh, I can call this matrix as matrix A, this as matrix B, and this as matrix B. Here, A is called 
टेक्नोलॉजिकल टेक्नोलॉजिकल को एफिशियंट मैट्रिक्स एंड द एलिमेंट्स एंड द एलिमेंट्स इन दिस मैट्रिक्स इन द मैट्रिक्स और कॉल्ड टेक्नोलॉजिकल को एफिशियंस टेक्नोलॉजिकल को एफिशियंस सो वॉट आर ऑल डिफरेंट नॉमन क्लेचर्स वी अंडरस्टूड वन इज वी अंडरस्टूड ऑब्जेक्टिव फंक्शन अनदर वन वॉट वी अंडरस्टूड इज कंस्ट्रेंट्स देन थर्ड वन वी अंडरस्टूड इज नॉन नेगेटिविटी रिस्ट्रिक्शन देन वी अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज डेसिशन वेरिएबल्स now we understood what are technological coefficients and what is technological coefficient matrix right further uh matrix b is called resource availability matrix because that indicates the elements indicates what are the resources available right technological coefficient matrix is nothing but resource requirement matrix right that is what we understood from that so i think we covered all those nomenclatures uh the last one what we understood is resource availability resource availability we understood and technological coefficient matrix is nothing but the resource requirement matrix one more is there uh, in the objective function in the objective function the coefficients of the decision variables uh what are the decision variables x and y this what are those coefficients if we go back and see yeah here if you look into the coefficients of x and y in the objective function it is 250 and 400 right 250 and 400 respectively are called coefficients of objective function coefficients of objective function so these are the different nomenclatures which we saw in the previous video and that time we said we will understand all those nomenclatures through an example so that is what we tried to understand now or we can say coefficients of objective function or also we can say objective functions coefficient objective functions coefficients sorry coefficients in case if you find the contents of this video to be useful to you i request you to please like it share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel thank you